Okay, so yes, I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Thanks for coming back so quickly. So let's have an exciting afternoon uh, session. And well, we will start. Um, can you put, put up the program? So, okay, it's not you. Okay. So I have one little announcement um, for us to get connected. There's a Facebook group, so you might want to, to, to join the group. I think it's up. Okay, so it's EC Bologna 2022. So you can just uh, uh, ask to join and you can share all important information about the most, the hippest bars for tonight or whatever you want to talk about, okay. So <laughs> let's do that. Okay, so let's start to the afternoon. Um, welcome, Soleya, who you. will start uh, telling about us about the interesting things going on in the, the Netherlands. Yes. <laughs> and which one was that? This one? This one. Okay. This right, this one was up. Okay, perfect. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Sulea uh, and I'm the head of marketing at uh, Kino uh, Rotterdam, uh, a cinema in the Netherlands. Um, we have uh, been open since uh, October of 2016. We have uh, four screening rooms, uh, but we are adding two more. So um, hopefully next year we'll have uh, six screening rooms. Uh, we have a bar, a cafe and a restaurant. Uh, and we uh, have a very eclectic um, programming. We show uh, Hollywood movies, but also crossover titles. And we specialize in uh, making our own special programming focused on uh, uh, classics uh, in Kino. Uh, and I have a few examples of uh, what I want to show you is um, I really believe in creating uh, your own content. Uh, for your cinema to give your uh, cinema uh, uh, a brand uh, to be uh, to have your own look um, and I have a few examples uh, to show you so I hope this is going to work um, since we've been open uh, we create our own uh, trailers custom made trailers for our uh, special programming and I'd like to show you um, one of my favorites I hope it works, yes. trailers we uh, show them of course in our screening rooms but we show them online as well through our social media uh, and it works to attract uh, a young audience I think uh, but I do notice that a change is going on especially on Facebook because uh, the reach is a lot less I think uh, nowadays 
Um, Instagram works fine, but uh, we make uh, for all of these reels we make now uh, shorter ones, like square ones, fifteen seconds, and Instagram story uh, versions as well, uh, with a link to the website and tickets and so on. Um, and another, I hope it doesn't begin again. Yes. So. Um, Another thing I think uh, works uh, very uh, well is, um, as I think someone else just mentioned it now, that uh, not only promoting the films that are uh, premiering, but also showing where you work and who you work with. Uh, as I mentioned, we're uh, adding two more sc uh, screening rooms to uh, the cinema. And I thought um, it would be nice to show the process of uh, Kino 2.0. Um, like on top, you can see the artist impression of how it's going to look. And um, I use <laughs> social media now to show my colleagues who, uh, like the process of the rebuilding. Um, and a part of the backstage is gone now. Um, and let me show you a few of these clips. <laughs> a part <laughs> <laughs> a few weeks ago, part of the roof was already gone, uh, demolished. So when it started to rain, it started raining inside. And uh, a colleague of mine filmed it. And I, this used to be our old office. And now it's completely gone. Um, this is how it looks now. This is from the inside of our uh, bar area. There used to be a whole building in the back. And now it is gone. So I hope next year we'll have uh, two uh, new, new uh, screening rooms and a larger bar area. But uh, for now, I'm going to keep on sharing these uh, these pictures and videos. Oh, and then to the next. Sorry, I have a lot of videos, so I have to see how I <laughs> go to the next one. Yes. Okay. I have to go back one... No, I think this is it. Um, okay, so on Instagram, I also think about things like um, what can we show to make it more gimmicky and fun? Uh, and we in Kino are quite a fan of uh, Nicolas Cage, the actor. And uh, <laughs> uh, a few years ago, a friend of ours gifted us uh, this pillow, uh, which you can like make uh, creations and... Uh, um, she just gave us one and then a few months ago uh, it got stolen and we I posted online that we were sad that our pillow was stolen and then you see on the top corner we have a visitor <laughs> that gifted us uh, another pillow because he was sad for us um, so th and then I shared that one as well and people keep on comment commenting on it and um, it leads a life of its own um, and a few months ago, uh, there was a pr uh, premiere title with uh, Nicolas Cage in the le lead playing himself. Um, so I ordered a bunch of pillows. And uh, what happened was I thought I'd throw a raffle and uh, give a few uh, pillows away. Uh, and a few uh, pillows in our bar, bar area. And uh, what happens is that people make their own creations. And when I come uh, to work in the early morning, I see all these new creations uh, on the couch and on the <laughs> on the chair. So I'm, I take pictures and I'm posting them online, and then pe people react to them. And it, it it's it's a gimmick, but it works, I think. So uh, the the idea is to make to make it fun, to make it uh, um, not only about the films which I said that are premiering, but also um, show the fun you're having and uh, this is another um, project uh, I was thinking a few years ago that it was uh, like in between films it's kind of uh, a waste of space not to do anything with the the screen when people are seated waiting for the film to begin it's a nice way of uh, promoting the specials you have or linking to your Instagram um, so I uh, asked our designers to develop this for us, 
So now I can uh, upload different specials uh, on the back of the website. And um, so it's, I think it's a good way to advertise. Um, and you have the full attention of your, of your audience. So um, this is what people see when they enter our screening room before the trailers and the films uh, start. And uh, now I also have like the ability to uh, not only add uh, images, but also short little clips. So in July of 2020, we had uh, uh, the introduction of a uh, 70 millimeter in our cinema. Um, and I really had to think about how to promote this because it's quite costly. It's uh, the tickets are, uh, of course, uh, you have to pay an extra fee. And I know we are cinema lovers and we know the, the how special it is, but you have to communicate this to the audience as well. So, um, like I said, I had to think about a promotional plan. Um, and my main focus was to uh, tell the audience why is this so exclusive and why is it so awesome to have? Um, and what I did was that I captured every step of, um, of the process. So um, like the installation, uh, the delivery of the films. And we also uh, made a short, I'm gonna see if I can put the noise, the, the sound down. And we also made a short documentary uh, telling our audience why it is uh, so special and how long it took us to find uh, the projector. Uh, so what happened or what we did is that our programmers are telling the audience why it's so cool. So what we did was uh, make a documentary, it's like 10 minutes, and we screened it uh, in front of every 70 millimeter uh, screening. Uh, what I did was uh, also I made a teaser version of it so I could post it online to tease people and tell we're going to do this. And um, yeah, in the end this worked as well because I'm going to sh just show a little bit more. These are our programmers. En, uh, en film en dan zeker met 70 mm is het, uh, ja, is het format waarin het gegoten sorry. wordt. En daardoor heb je zo, uh, door het grotere filmstrook heb je zo like veel the, meer resolutie dat uh, like de film They tell about the, the difference between DCP and 70 mm. But also to speak to a younger audience, we made also like the connection between you have Spotify, but you have vinyl as well. And the young people love vinyl. So that's also being mentioned in the documentary. Um, so at first we uh, screened it in front of our 70 millimeters of screenings. And later on, I put it online as well for people to see. Um, and what happened next? Let me see if this. So what we see now is that people come to Kino to the 70 millimeter screenings and uh, go to the projection booth, speak to the uh, projectionist and take pictures and selfies uh, uh, with, <laughs> with the, uh, in the projection booth. Uh, and what I can do is then share these stories again and then it's, again, it leads a life of its own and it's, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's working. So uh, we're quite happy with it that it's, um, that uh, that it does. And um, our biggest project uh, to date is um, we made a short documentary in 2019. Um, what happened was that we, uh, in our bar area, we have um, uh, exhibitions and we have a good contact at the Dutch photo museum in Rotterdam and she told us that there was a Dutch photographer on the set of Apocalypse Now in 1976 when the film was being filmed um, so we said okay let's make an appointment and see the pictures thinking that it would be photos we had already seen online and um, that we would know the pictures 
But when we <laughs> came uh, to the um, to the museum, we saw that were all never before seen pictures. Uh, like the programmer and my brother who makes our trailers, <laughs> you can see with the purple uh, gloves. They are the biggest fan of this film, and they said, "I, I have, I didn't know this." Uh, and it's also a Dutch photographer. Um, so the idea was to uh, exhibit seven uh, photos in our bar area, but it was a bigger project than that. Uh, so my brother said, "I want to make a documentary." And the beautiful thing is that the Dutch photographer doesn't live in the Netherlands anymore, but he was coming to uh, Rotterdam um, to go to the museum and talk to the people there. So we thought, okay, we can interview him. So we decided to make uh, a documentary. And this is a short teaser. So we, had, we saw the pictures in the March of 2019 and uh, we wanted to finish it as soon as possible because it was the 40th anniversary of Apocalypse Now as well. So you can lift off the publicity, hopefully, of this film. Um, so we made it in two months. Like the, We started filming in May for a weekend, two days of shooting. And um, when we were editing, or my brother was editing, uh, of course, I wrote a press release and I contacted The Guardian uh, to let them know that there are pictures of Apocalypse Now that have never been seen before. And what happened was that it got a lot of attention um, and in the end our film premiered at this festival in 2019 and uh, we were... <laughs> like the second poster of the festival was from this film. Um, and what happened with The Guardian was that um, the pe people of, Apoc of um, Francis Ford Coppola, of course, heard about this. And then they gave us a call like, what the hell are you doing? Because the pictures are ours and not yours to use. Uh, can you send us an edit quick? Um, so uh, my brother edited very fast, sent a link to uh, Francis Ford Coppola, who watched it at home in San Francisco. And then he gave us an OK to uh, do whatever we want for the next 10 years. And um, the only thing they asked us if the documentary could be on the Blu-ray of uh, the re-release of Apocalypse Now. So that's where you see us together. Uh, so we're also on the Blu-ray now. Uh, and we're also on movie. So if you have a, an account, you can watch it there as well for the next two years. And what's also nice is that the Dutch photographer was uh, trying for years to get an exhibition at the photo museum, but never got a chance. And with all the the, the attention, um, he got uh, the exhibition and he made this photo book, uh, which he's signing for me. And he also wrote his autobiography. And all of this happened last year. So it was like a full circle sort of thing. And yeah, this for us was, uh, I hope I can top this project sometime soon, but uh, it was uh, hard work for a few months, and um, but yeah, it paid off, I think. So we reached even a bigger audience than our own audience. The film also um, was to be seen in different uh, cinemas in the Netherlands. I Film Museum bought the documentary and released it together with Apocalypse Now, so you could book the documentary as well. Um, it uh, also was to be seen in a few uh, cinemas uh, across Europe. And uh, yeah, and now it's a movie, like I said. So if you want to watch it, you can uh, see it there as well. And that was my presentation. But I have a QR code for you if you want to know more, see more, because our Vimeo channel has like 106 uh, trailers and interviews with... Uh, director so if you want to see it I've linked everything here um, so you can uh, watch for yourselves thank you very much <laughs> so stay here for, for oh, questions sure, sure. I think I think we, we can have some questions right, uh, right now it's uh, well thanks for the talk it was really impressive yes uh, <laughs> uh, just going back to, to what you do in your 
normal everyday business, not releasing uh, photo yeah. books and everything. Yes. Uh, just how many people are working with uh, social media and these and making trailers and uh, and do you do uh, do all this in, in house or do you have uh, external partners um, to do this work? Like the marketing publicity, I'm alone, so I do uh, okay. social media. I produce the documentary. Um, we have two programmers uh, and the one making all our trailers. Uh, the documentaries you saw is my brother who works as a freelancer for us so we are a very tiny group of people mm. but I think what works is that we are a, such a sh uh, small group of people so we mm. can think quickly of what to do and when to do it like I said the documentary was being released within so we made it within six weeks but all the other work in the cinema kept on going as well okay. so um, yeah we're a very uh, small team that sounds effective That's yes really impressive yeah yes, thanks yes. a lot I think there might be questions here from anybody. No. Or not. <laughs> Or not. Yeah, here's one. So. In the back. Do, do you have any sort of a Kino um, fan club or membership or people that are Kino supporters in a sense? I think we have a large following, but we we don't have like a membership. We did try a, a film club uh, a few years back, um, but at the moment, no, I, I'm thinking, but not necessarily, no. Okay. We have Cineville, yeah, and I think that's uh, like all the cinemas here, I think from the Netherlands, it's a very, um, it's like a membership. Uh, you pay uh, around 20 euros a month, and then you can go to all the art houses, uh, most art houses in the Netherlands so uh, it's not even your own city but you can go to Amsterdam you can go to Rotterdam and I think that works because you're not um, seeing the other cinemas in your city as uh, uh, it's f nice because uh, if people go to another cinema that means that they will come to us as well so I mm. think people watch more take more risks because of this uh, membership mm. so that's um, I think in the Netherlands that's uh, what uh, works very well. Mm -hmm. um, we as a cinema, we are following you on your social media and very impressed and you actually inspired us, you and Texas Theater in tech, uh, in US to do the trailers. So oh, we nice. are doing it right now, but I have a question regarding, uh, because in social media you have a great feedback and mm -hmm. all those films, films are like awesome. Uh, but can you see the like like those really works and you see the full house on your uh, during the screening as well yes. or this is okay Definitely. Well, because otherwise we couldn't do the specials because someone just mentioned it's, uh, they're very costly to do yeah, it is uh, so the most of the money goes to the classical programming and if it doesn't work then we couldn't also afford the trailers or to do uh, mm -hmm. more promotion for them so, yeah, yeah yeah because we we have this struggle that we do something let's say uh similar online but not always people are coming uh, we see reactions on instagram and facebook but then not uh the full house let's say because it depends yeah. on many issues but i wanted to know whether it's like yeah and what i mentioned just before do you also like take pictures of uh like the cinema itself the people working there i think that, that that's all together what works it's not just putting the trailer online and then hope for people to come you have to and what we also do is like uh, per film sometimes I make shorter versions or I'll put an interesting scene like stills back to back um, really trying to translate why people should see it I think um, um, I sometimes see myself as a visitor as well and I think what would I want to see uh, to make me convinced to come to the cinema so that's a sort of way to think maybe did you ever run into uh, legal problems with the trailers if you use uh, material uh, where, where, do, where do you get the material do you take other trailers or do you take uh, parts from the blu-ray or parts something? from the blu-rays mm -hmm. uh, we have not yet um, encountered problems because I think we what we do is try to sell tickets for the films of course but do you yeah, ask no. in, uh, the question is, do you ask or just uh, we, do you we just do. don't we do and if yeah. um, that's also like uh, with our programmers and directors I like we want to do is let's mm. take the risk and uh, if we hear something then we'll put it off uh, okay. offline hmm. is 
the more you want to know. Okay. Thank you. So, <laughs> thanks a lot. Okay. I mean, could you repeat the Facebook thing? I tried to find it uh, and didn't really? find it. <laughs> you have to put it up again, of for course. me at least. <laughs> um, I sh shut the page up. <laughs> if it's not too much. Yeah, I think it's not too much. Uh, so trouble. what is the name of the Oh, bowl up. Okay. Bowl up. I'll, I'll put it later on. Okay. Okay. What do you mean? Oh. This. Down, down, down. So should we go to the next? Yeah, okay. So let's continue. So uh, we have three um, case studies coming up uh, concerning digital marketing, and I think we start with Pavel. So. Yeah, okay. Cool. That was a very impressive presentation. I will try to lower the bar for the next speakers now. <laughs> so uh, the topic uh, I'm presenting is building community through social media. What is next? And a little bit of context. I am from uh, cinema located in Culture Center. We are city funded. So during the pandemic, the, the our problem wasn't exactly uh, letting people go more okay letting people go more um how to uh, justify our existence and why we are getting paid while we are closed uh so i will talk about two things um, our facebook group that has already more than 1000 members but don't worry most of them are automatically invited so yeah, th they're not very conscious, I think, uh, why are they coming? And the second one is a film discussion club that was uh, online during um, lockdowns. Uh, so yeah, um, it's May 2020 and the pressure to do something to justify our existence is very high. And uh, Netflix was premiering this film and I thought it was a good opportunity to start Film Discussion Clubs. Film Discussion Club is a stationary cycle that we have in our cinema. It's weekly based uh, on Wednesdays, Wednesday evenings. It's the last screening of the day. And there is introduction and uh, screening of the film, and later there is a discussion for willing participants. Um, and so uh, we did the Netflix party. It's, uh, it was an application that uh, you could watch a film together. One person was clicking play and everyone was seeing at the same time. And uh, I invited Polish distributor of the Mendy, not the uh, distributor exactly, but they did a few of... Uh, screenings midnight screenings of the film so it was the first uh, film discussion club online was basically me interviewing them about the film but later uh, and later, later it was uh, june and cinemas reopened so we uh, did i think two more uh, e events like this and then we stopped for holidays which is what we usually do with film discussion club and but uh, then the second lockdown happened and we came back to the idea and uh, we, we used uh, i used the facebook group to engage uh, audience and they could uh, there was a poll to pick a film uh, and we quickly resigned uh, of it because uh, many people voted for films not many came after to discuss about them and uh, I think the point at which I realized it's not working, it was when three people were discussing about The Five Bloods by Spike Lee and none of us were voting for that film. So I switched to um, discussing with the members that were coming to the discussion club and we were choosing together or I was just looking at uh, premieres on streamings and choose from it and now it's my little multiverse of madness it's uh, 
screens screenshots from all i think uh, or maybe there are two lacking but all the um, film discussion clubs online you can see that i was searching for a style at the first two and then i found it and i stick to it and uh, and you can also see that there, there is more light at the end because the months were passing by but believe it or not uh, i wasn't alone at this uh, event there were m more people and yeah, sometimes you weren't see the, the, the faces, sometimes it was Marcello Mastroianni coming in and we were talking. Um, but uh, the, the screenshot that I'm showing here is actually from the most attendant uh, event. It was a uh, premiere of uh, All My Friends Are Dead, which is a Polish Netflix film that was premiering, I think, day before New Year's Eve. Uh, and it was coming out of nowhere. Nobody really know what it was, but it was new film, Polish film, uh, one of first uh, Netflix Polish films. So it was very interesting, and it was kind of trashy movie. So you know that always uh, brings audience. But uh, um, what? Um, but uh, there weren't many participants on this event. The on the second year in 2021 the base group uh, established itself it was me uh, Olaf from Kinopod Baranami and uh, the one guy who found out that there is some event held online and in fact that uh, <laughs> so so it was it was three persons that you can count on and then uh, many more depending on the film we were talking about and the guy random guy actually became one of the speakers uh, uh, on stationary edition of on film discussion club and we also with other members of this club and other speakers we made a podcast and we are we were talking about films that we were screening at the film discussion club stationary and we were posting info about it on our facebook group and uh, it was something to encourage other to um, react and to engage uh, in the dis discussion and we actually saw the people that were uh, reacting and talking with us on the meetings on the screenings of the film discussion club uh, stationary uh, but there were the same people that we were going on casual drinks so you know that's the the key go and drink with people uh, and uh, now facebook group is becoming more uh, I don't know, it's not me talking to myself anymore. There are other people, most of them. It's kind of like bulletin boards. You can uh, go there and ask a random question about the industry or try to find uh, friends to go out on a drink or uh, it's me and my uh, manager who are posting events that are happening in our cinema or for example the one with uh, posters it's me looking for volunteers to help and do the event with you can say it's called poster grabbing you can come on and grab a poster and leave uh yeah, yeah i know i have a uh, so uh, it's becoming more and more um, r random it's not a very good word for it but, but uh, it's not so homogenic anymore and uh, I think we are in the process of something it's not established yet uh, we are getting somewhere I think that the important moment was uh, creating a critical mass on the group because uh, on the beginning it was only me and then another guy who was posting a review of films and I was the only person commenting on them and I think I discouraged him uh, but there are m more of them now and they are not so easily discouraged. Uh, so we are getting somewhere uh, to answer the question from the topic. I don't know what is next yet, uh, but I think it's something better than w it was before. And that's it. Thank you. Just Dave, are there questions by the way? Yes. Just a very quick question around. <laughs> okay. uh, I wanted to ask about the podcast. Uh, is it successful? And if so, uh, did you buy any additional uh, 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 advert for, for it? Uh, 
Um, hello? Oh, yeah. It uh, depends on your definition of success. Uh, <laughs> the beginning was that we are trying to find out if we actually can do it because there are many podcasts that start and end before episode seven. So we are now at episode 27, I think. Uh, not yet successful, but uh, I think it's a part of building a community and something around cinema. We also uh, resigned from talking only about films screened at Film Discussion Club because they were getting too hermetic. I know. Uh, so we are open to, to another films and we were talking about Doctor Strange and Top Gun and such like, things like that. More questions? Perhaps a final question from me. Uh, you uh, you uh, said you were talking about the Netflix series. Was it a conscious decision to include a Netflix production there, or did uh, you discuss this? I, I I think it wasn't. Uh, I'm the person in 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 my job that's not very against streaming services and not very afraid of mainstream cinema. So it was new and it was interesting for me. So I just figured out it will be interesting for someone else and. I didn't okay. think much about it. Okay, so thanks. And we continue with Blerina. Hello, I'm Verina Pasciolari from uh, Cinema Silvio Pellico uh, di Saronno in Italy. And today we are talking about a case study on how to attract uh, and engage uh, local audiences uh, through social media advertising and uh, email marketing. So uh, we started uh, making uh, some surveys and market research during the pandemic to best define our target audiences. And we uh, find out three main uh, personas, uh, which are um, important for us because they drive revenue and commercial value uh, as they are a regular viewer and also they are easy to reach with communication. Um, our main personas are most baby boomers, uh, gener generation X and part of generation Y, so part of millennials. After defining personas, we uh, defined three business objectives we wanted to achieve that are connected to these personas. And uh, we did the, this using the SMART uh, approach, which uh, means that our goals should be uh, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And for this reason, we uh, our goals were about um, um, incrementing Facebook page reach by 50% in six months. We wanted to increment our Instagram followers by 30%. Uh, it's about 45 uh, followers per month. And we wanted to um, uh, make some email marketing, engaging 20% um, of email subscribers. And uh, for this purpose, we uh, chose three channels, which were uh, the most used from all personas. Uh, and the, uh, they are content marketing, social media, and uh, email marketing. So, content marketing. Uh, content marketing on social media um, posts were structured to attract attention and uh, create uh, curiosity. And uh, uh, using a small, um, a small uh, description, uh, um, offering programming hours of the movies uh, and uh, using the call to action like uh, shop now or learn more and link it to our website because another of our objective uh, were our goals were, were, was uh, that we wanted to create some traffic on our website also maybe uh, when you find the website then we decide to buy to buy the ticket and so on all the promoted content was um, uh, personalized, customized with uh, colors, logos and name of the cinema so they can have a direct reminder to, to our cinema. This is an example we made at the beginning. So. Um, 
uh, the advertising we had on social media, uh, especially on Facebook, uh, we, um, as you can see, we almost reached our goal. So uh, with paid uh, reach, we uh, gained almost 46% of the 50% reach we uh, wanted to, reach, to have. And um, in this case, the, the, the important thing was that indirectly, indirectly we also gain page likes and page followers. So through advertising to reach more people, uh, people then chooses to um, to follow our pages as well. So we gain in, the, in this case, in this sense. And uh, a similar um, approach we made with uh, Instagram. So we wanted uh, to, to increment our followers on Instagram, but we didn't want to buy them. So we don't, don't do, uh, didn't do um, posts uh, to, to acquire customers, to acquire um, followers, but we uh, did this kind of post with this kind of content uh, with the final call to action uh, was connected to the Instagram pages. So uh, you are interested in this kind of post, so follow our pages so maybe you can uh, have more information. And in this case, we uh, also reach our goal. Uh, content marketing in email marketing was structured about implementing a new platform like MailChimp and we thought about redesigning our email um, with a simple structure and uh, using uh, as well personali personalized content. Uh, we wanted to keep um, um, our target audience uh, to interact more with uh, the email and also with our website. And here we also have um, a good response because our main goal was to reach, um, to increase the open rate uh, because our actual open rate was at about 10% of the standard email um, newsletter. The benchmarking sector was 20%. So this is why we chose to reach 20% uh, with this strategy. And uh, the final measurement, uh, the analysis recorded an, open, uh, an average open rate of 30%. And we have a peaking of 35% on uh, campaign events uh, on November. So it was a great result for us. Our next steps, uh, mm, we want to continue with these strategies because we have good uh, success in these. Uh, then we also want to develop a WhatsApp business channel and uh, to keep customers interacting with us. And uh, we want uh, to increase the um, number of subscribers for email. And uh, also we want to develop TikTok channel to attract new customers. So the, we miss the young one and uh, this is, we thought maybe on TikTok we can reach more. So it's finished, thank you. <laughs>um how how do you have a manager marketing manager who is who is uh doing uh the ads you know i, I am I mean, the marketing manager yeah. I, i'm doing this uh, and you change the design i mean over the time or yeah sometimes we uh, try to do make to do uh, new layouts so maybe to to reach out which works better which creates more engagement so we we, we try different formats. We also um, do this on the trailers. So we keep the trailer, put the name of our cinema, sometimes the hours, uh, the programming hours, so it uh, works as well. So. Just on TikTok, I'd yeah. be interested to hear your initial ideas and maybe ask the room if anyone's using, using TikTok in an interesting way and having good results. 
this is one of the next steps we want to achieve with TikTok. So we have just um, created now our pages, but haven't started yet to do. Yeah, so we are just exploring what is working, uh, what we can do with the time we have. So, but it's one of the channels we want to develop in, in order to acquire younger audiences. So make them known our cinemas. So to, to ask, uh, uh, did you see a correlation between social media and uh, uh, visitors? Maybe you have some kind of small research, uh, how many um, these likes and uh, reactions mm -hmm. from social media uh, works in uh, uh, your uh, amount of audience? Yeah, thank you for this question because I forgot to mention. Uh, well, when we implemented Facebook advertising, we also installed uh, pixel algorithmics on our websites so we can best measure and also uh, define our advertising um, audiences. And uh, yeah, we we saw some feedback because um, we also um, made some um, Google Analytics um, um, insights using also um, uh, Google World Tracking, which we make this link uh, related to these campaigns so we can see on Google Analytics how many people click it on this campaign to go to the website. And also we have set some goals on Google Analytics to see if people uh, go to the purchase stage or uh, buy ticket. I can tell that um, it depends a lot of the movies, so on the product. Uh, we can see maybe um, if the movie attracts most, we have more sellers uh, selling online as well. But as I mentioned before, as our target audience is a little older, uh, they don't like to buy online. So we have a lot of cases, uh, sometimes we make quite um, survey asking people maybe the new one so where have you seen the programming information or where have you and mo some of them just confirmed that uh, they check on uh, on Facebook or on Instagram so it was nice to see but didn't have uh, you know um, I think most of, the, of us want to have more um, in cinema presence from social media but sometimes it, it isn't directly cor correlated, you know, I, I made a post, have a lot of likes, uh, which mm, sometimes uh, translated in likes on our pages, but that doesn't mean they come directly to, to see that movie, but it means that uh, I have more pages on, on my like on my pages, so more people can see my programming, so can come later to the movie, so it's indirectly. Yes, I would like to know more how you can uh, differentiate your contents uh, according to the different channels. You know that uh, yeah. YouTube has uh, a particular public, uh, TikTok another one. Yeah. And then uh, I'd like to know why did you choose a uh, mailing list? Because a lot of Italian cinemas use broadcast WhatsApp list, for example. Why did you, did you, did, did you do this choice? And uh, after all, you spoke about Google Analytics and so on. Yeah. Uh, you know that it, there is a big effort to do data analyzing using, uh, it's a big data problem maybe. So how can you follow this kind, this amount of data to trace or to profil, profile your customers? That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> can you repeat the first one? The please? answer is uh, very simple. First of all, how can you differentiate your content according uh, the channels? Two, yeah. why did you choose uh, a mailing list and not a broadcast list on WhatsApp? And the third one is, which kind of uh, uh, people do you, know, do you need to follow all these sophisticated, sophisticated means? Not only Google Analytics, but you are profiling your customers with a lot of data. How can you do this? Thanks. Okay. I started with the first one before I forget it. Uh, well, uh, when we do advertising on Facebook, uh, um, most of them are profilized with, um, you know, we keep an open range for the people, so 18 to 65 years old. So we don't change a lot of the, the age because we want also to reach 
younger people who are on Facebook, but uh, we select the local basis uh, advertising, so we want to reach people up to 30 to 40 kilometers uh, around the cinema. Yeah, yeah, the content, yeah, sometimes it, it can be the same, the same content, yeah. Uh, maybe when we um, when we did in Instagram, we put uh, different photos like a slideshow uh, so people can watch them and then link to our fa to our Instagram page. But the content, yeah, uh, yeah, most of all is the same on Facebook and Instagram. We are looking now to, to, to differentiate it on TikTok because we saw it didn't work the, the same as Facebook, so the content must be really different on TikTok, but uh, the Mosa is the same. Okay. Yeah, we, we are achieving. Perhaps don't get too specific now. <laughs> <So> <laughs> maybe you should talk lighter uh, during. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk, yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. Specific. Yeah. I think Fatima had another. No, no, no. no okay, yeah. No, I don't okay. want to, to stop anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Try to make it short. Um, when did um, when you did the analysis of like your audience, uh, the data that you show it as uh, are based on your like based on what like the audience on uh, the social media. You mean the same and, base? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah or yeah. or some other data we put uh, uh, together different data so we uh, make this survey during the pandemic asking uh, how many times people come to our cinema and it, it was specific to our uh, audience. audience yeah uh, because we send the survey through email and uh, through social media and uh, ask uh, um, our followers to to to, to respond you so know? it's based only on the survey no, 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 no. Uh, beside the survey, we gather it, uh, we divided people who uh, come the most or the fewer, which was the age, where do, do they come from. And then we mix this data with some market research, uh, defining uh, this kind of person in general in the Italy market, how do they behave going to cinema, which uh, is their budget. Uh, they have, uh, we do, did some demographic, we mix them together. So... So okay. More later. Thank you. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I think okay. some people will come up to you okay. and ask you later. <laughs> be happy okay. To share my so experience. thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for answering questions. So and it will be Andrea now. Andrea, please come up. Okay. The video is here. Okay, so okay. this one. Perfect. We'll put it full screen. And when you want to switch the video, you have to. Okay, where, where is it? This one is here. Okay. That's it. This here. Perfect. See? Yep. Let me see. Where? Okay. No, let me see. Okay, he's there. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. No, no. Allora, non ho la presunzione di I don't dare be an expert, uh, such an expert to tell you what is creativity. But I like to give you a set of examples that based on the reality I'm living in, I had the chance of examining and analyzing. Because in my opinion, creativity is based on a sort of compromise in between our own sensitivity. Can you hear me? No? Can you hear me now? Okay? Good. So, our own sensitivity, the context we are living in, the situations that surround us. So, how can we get to a creative idea, especially in this historical time where we had this big break in February 2020? Let's start back from our audience. We've seen that the elderly have been the 
detached, so we rather focused on young people and young audience. That's why in October 2020, we started involving a group of young people from 18 to 25 years old. We had the chance of testing them in a way for a whole set of activities ranging from promotional activities for the social media by creating personal and customized contents. I mean here that they have a simpler type of communication. But let me make an introduction first. Uh, Stenson Facebook started in 2013, while Instagram was born in March 2020. So you understand they have a different historical background. Young people the young audience tried to communicate in a much simpler way vis-a-vis -vis Facebook. On Facebook, you can communicate in a, a more word-based and long type of communication. You can make yourself clearer, while Instagram is simpler, quicker, and that's it. So this had pros and cons uh, as uh, all the campaigns I'm going to show you. First of all, we wanted to emphasize uh, that given film. I don't know whether they're familiar with this. This The main character is a girl uh, around 20, 25 years of age, and she's trying to find a good compromise in between her love life and her working life. So try and involve young people on this topic creates a sort of empathy with that uh, type of of audience. Of course, I would have behaved differently as I'm from a different age group. This created some discontinuity in our web page because customers asked themselves what is happening now. But we intercepted, if you like, we caught the audience we wanted to get. So this was efficient, but at the same time, this type of energy can be applied only to a given type of films because other films and maybe don't have those type of main characters are not efficient or should not be used. Let's go back in time as to compromises in between a creative idea and a film to be promoted. We had a film uh, that was not known even before the premiere, and it was called Gli Asteroidi. And uh, at that time, a TV ad or commercial was uh, uh, implemented, and there was a snack by the Mata uh, food industry family, Buon D. I show you the ad now. Sorry, we don't have volume now. Anyway, even though you can't hear the volume, I can explain this to you very quickly. It's very simple. So a girl, very boring girl, went to her mom and asked her, Mom, is there a snack that is uh, healthy and good? Uh, no, it is, there is none. Could a meteorite hit me if there was one? So this type of uh, commercial became really viral, very, very popular in Italy because on Italian TVs or TV channels, some people or some families did not agree on showing the death of a mother on TV. I'm swearing, you know, that's true. So that's the reason why this type of uh, commercial became so popular, very, very fam famous. So we decided to put in touch the title of the film, The Asteroidi, uh, with the meteorite and this uh, type of uh, snack 
commercial. And we gave away a bondi snack as a present to all uh, uh, people coming to see uh, the film, watch the film. So you can see there were 68 people who put their likes in 2017. We had much less uh, likes. I think we had uh, 7,000 uh, people following us. So it was really a social media uh, campaign that was very popular. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it had a very low response in terms of uh, uh, viewers, uh, only 20 viewers uh, came to see the film, so to watch the film. So sometimes uh, a creative idea, a functional idea that works on social media might have a different ty type of yield uh, or perform very differently on uh, uh, other media. Sometimes you cannot simply uh, make uh, dead people come alive again. If the film is not known, it's difficult to make it, pop it popular all of a sudden. Another example I'd like to give you is this poster that we published on Facebook uh, much earlier than the film was distributed. This film talks about uh, a priest coming from Tuscany region, so with a given audience in our own uh, region. Tuscany. And once we showed this poster be much before distributing the film, we saw that uh, there was a great reaction on that post. Uh, Stencil had uh, 9,000 likes, uh, and we had uh, 10,000 people visiting that post. And at that point, we decided to sponsor the post, and we generated a lot of comments also from people outside the Tuscany region, people uh, writing to us from Bergamo or Udine, asking when is this film going to be screened in our region. So in this case, we replaced the role that is normally played by the distributor because this film uh, was very appealing, uh, in particular in Tuscany region. So from the point of view of prose, we did have an increase in our uh, personnel number. We worked on uh, uh, theater personnel too, because our uh, theater is uh, has a Catholic uh, orientation. And on the other hand, we also uh, found it difficult at the beginning to manage all these sort of comments because you cannot uh, simply abandon a post that, that works and you support it and promote it. Another cons was that this type of activity as any kind of creative uh, actions can be applied only on some cases. Here we had a very clearly identified type of audience. Another example I'd like to give you. We had uh, a film, Rams, is the title by two uh, brothers from Iceland that had uh, some conflicts in uh, their own activity and business. They uh, used to breed sheep. So we explained uh, to our audience that we could have raised and adopted uh, one single sheep in Sardinia. Uh, and uh, at that time, Stensons had 700, 800 viewers, even 1,000. But by calculating how much the adoption of this sheep would have costed, and uh, also our own uh, uh, revenues, uh, we identified a, a thousand viewers. So to promote all this and uh, involve the audience and work on the uh, theater identity, we decided to tell our audience, in case we obtain 1,000 viewers, it's up to you to decide the name that this goat or sheep has to be given. So we'll have a selection first, and then the name selected and the person that will decide the name would be given some wheels of cheese as a present. So you see there's a royalty building 
campaign. If I'm not wrong, we went over 2,000 viewers for this film. Beautiful film, a lot of atmosphere, and very nice, but unknown film, okay? So the pros are the sense of a community that can be built around a good purpose, increasing the number of uh, audience and viewers, and increasing the visibility of our theater as a multi-purpose space. Some people said, okay, I'm going to uh, watch a film at the Stenson because uh, a goat has to be adopted. So again, crowns. Uh, on top of the structure and the difficulties in managing this difficult campaign is uh, uh, the fact that only a few titles could be used. Another and last example, in May 2014, another screening of uh, the Broken Circle Breakdown by Alabama Monroe was an unknown film at the time. I uh, was uh, uh, a country singer and a tattooer that fell in love, and we tried to promote this through uh, Cineforum, the, this usual format. But then we had an idea to organize an evening with a tattooer and uh, uh, those who would show up their own tattoos would be awarded a prize. And also the following screening would, uh, yes, the uh, award would would simply be a price discount, okay? So there again, it's an example that you, an activity you can carry out to increase the number of viewers. And uh, I can imagine that some people said, okay, I'm going to the stance because I have a tattoo and I'll have a reduction. And then talking about this uh, is a way of promoting uh, uh, discussions on filmmaking. Uh, and uh, again, uh, at that time, the Stenson uh, Facebook page had just a few likes, but it really had uh, a huge response from the audience because the film had almost 1,900 viewers. So a very good response if compared to uh, the, uh, I have to conclude, I know, to the expected results. Okay, to end with. The target I'm proposing is mainly based on social media. So digital communication as well as um, current uh, communication is running extremely fast, is racing. So if we have a press conference and tomorrow an article is going to be published on our uh, theater, we have to communicate this tomorrow. So from the creativity point of view, again, we have to run and do it quickly. We have to uh, deal with realities uh, that are very sensitive now, but they might no longer be sensitive tomorrow. So I can give you some examples here. We have some tags, we have some trends in Italy at the moment. Uh, we are talking about uh, Elisa Esposito. Uh, handwriting, and she just invited a type of uh, communication style that is very simple. Uh, so nothing special. Uh, I'm a bit provocative now, okay? So that's an example that tells us, or at least tells me, that I have to pay attention to whatever is happening around me in communication, social media, in newspapers, and I have to try and wonder why and how this can be used for our own purposes. So italic can be a way but to be used, but we don't simply have to promote a film from to many extent by using that uh, uh, italic uh, style. So can we uh, find something that is similar, for example, to the snack motta uh, commercial was so successful. So uh, if I think about the newsletter from an institutional point of view, uh, I would not think mentioning italics as a style, but I could simply uh, talk about a specific uh, channel. Well, this is quite uh, a tentative, uh, an attempt I can make, but it's risky at the same time. That's it.
Grazie, grazie mille. Ci sono delle domande. Ecco, hai parlato della promozione, hai parlato di un gruppo di persone. Ecco, allora da dove viene questo gruppo di persone? Viene da School of People. Una serie di proiezioni comes from a number of uh, screenings in uh, in May you know when we reopened cinemas in Italy and uh, the elderly had almost uh, disappeared so the people aged between 50 and 75 had disappeared whereas The young people uh, came to the cinema because they had missed uh, cinema. So we tried and uh, understood how to keep, uh, how to retain that public. We wanted to create a, a group of young people. So we held meetings from October, September, so weekly meetings. We had weekly meetings, uh, screenings uh, they could have access to uh, for free. Free. So we wanted to create this sense of community and we established a subgroup of people made up of people of their age. So this has generated a number of uh, responsibilities. So uh, these boys and girls um, organized a um, uh, film club uh, on the on the film, the worst. Uh, uh, The worst people. So the 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 perspective was completely different. Uh, you know, they adopted, and this was amazing because they uh, were approached to uh, criticism, uh, cinema crit uh, critique. So something that they are not familiar with. But uh, you know, we also um, they also learned what it means to be uh, exhibitors and to to work in theaters actually okay, well, so basically this you. any questions from uh, yes. uh, qualche domanda da parte del pubblico mic samba let me speak in english eh? okay that's the mic here yep. thank you <laughs> kiddy no kiddy kiddy i thought I would ask this as well, but I saw it in the uh, in the headline. Yeah, ask it. Kitty. Kitty. So how's the goat doing today? I don't know. Really? Okay. <laughs> Because it's uh, seven years ago. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but you didn't invite the goat to a dinner, perhaps? I don't know. No. <laughs> Probably, probably. <laughs> no. <laughs> kiddie, kiddie. A sheep, okay. Yeah, a sheep. Still, yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. So we have to go get on. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so. Okay. So we have to get some movement into. Yeah, applause for yes. Andrea. Thanks a lot. So, uh, again, I have to speak to the microphone. Uh, moving on, everybody standing up. We're going to do a quick uh, physical activity. Up, 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 up. I will, I will be sitting down because uh, I have to speak into the microphone. <laughs>